Hey YouTube, so today we got a unique problem, unique issue, and it's kind of complicated, but actually it's rather simple to fix. And uh, it's, not, it's not something that happens very often, but you might run into it if you're messing with any vehicles. Um, the spring on this vehicle has broken. Coil spring, as you can see. See that right there? And the other side of it, you can see it right there. So, the common question, the most obvious question in this particular case is how do you fix that? Well, basically, you remove it. Now, there we got some light on the situation. See how that's down in there? And let's see it. get a good angle at it but anyway trust me this, this thing's broke <laughs> <laughs> it's the purpose of making a video so i don't like to fix stuff that's not broke yeah you can see it right there it's, that's a good idea it, it's broken but there's still tension on the spring now when you mess with springs and stuff you need to be extremely careful because that is a lot of stored energy now uh, before we got started on this particular task we uh lifted the vehicle up and we do have it supported with jack stands. In this case, since it's a heavier vehicle, we have six ton jack stands. So the two together will give you a total combined weight of 12 tons of what it can hold. So, come over here. Now, first thing we'll need to do is remove tie rod ends here. Then we're gonna remove the stabilizer bar. And then we're gonna come here, we're gonna remove the lower control um, ball joint. Lower control arm ball joint. Once we do that, and we'll also remove the sh shock here once we do that this arm will come down um, and we can remove the spring so we're gonna get all that stuff loose and show you what it looks like and we'll be right back. step one you want to take off the tie rod end outer tie rod end basically that's a nut but they do have a cotter pin in there um, I already, already slid that out but here's the cotter pin and it goes through that and what that does is that locks that nut and keeps it from turning so pull the cotter pin out. I love using these diagonal pliers to grab the cotter pins like that and then you can pull it gives you very good leverage and with the blade in there you know get some dull ones so you don't cut this in half and it'll give you a very good grip you can just pull that out. Now you can either use a fork to knock that out or my favorite method if you've seen my videos is just to take a hammer get a good hit on that bad boy. go. So a good hit and that'll pop right on out. This thing is extremely greasy. Whenever you're working with grease, get you some gloves. Um, you know, you don't want to catch cancer or anything like that from this grease. Now once you remove that, that gives you the t access to get in here to the sway bar bolts and also it allows you to freely turn your spindle. Okay, so we're going to knock this bolt out. Uh, we have easier access we'll get those off and then we'll get that all right now we'll take the shock mount loose sway bar link removed, our tie rod end removed, and now we're going to remove the um, lower ball joint nut. Now also, if you get down here and you can't get this nut off, you can always remove the upper ball joint. Either way, whichever one you do is going to cause this thing to be able to swing outward. So we'll remove that and then we'll disconnect that nut. And as you see, we have the shock loose. Oh yeah, also this is a good way to tell whether or not got a good shock or not. A lot of people say, well, how do I know if it needs shock? There you go. Right here, check this out. See that? You can pull that down. Yeah. But look, I can push it up. No resistance there. 
that shock should automatically shoot back out and I shouldn't be able to push it up by my hand like that. So that shock is dead, so we're gonna go ahead and replace that too while we're doing all this. If you're gonna do the job, you may as well go ahead and replace everything else. Also, we found the brake pads are worn, so we're gonna replace all those bad all right, boys. So now we're back on our, our project here. We've got our new parts in. They just came in off the delivery truck. And you see here, this is the broke spring. Crime, you see, it was broke there. That would go like that. So of course, you know, a standard, a good standard thing you want to do when you're doing springs is, you know, try to measure, make sure it's, you know, close to the same size, same length, um, close to the same diameter or the same diameter. You don't want to go with a smaller spring because obviously, obviously if the smaller, if the, if the big spring broke, then you put a smaller one on there, it's definitely going to break. So now also in going back with this job, we're going to put new shocks on it. Now the shock. What the shock actually does is control the spring rate of, control the bounciness in the springs. It takes the bounciness out of it, controls the ride. And you see how you got to pull that one out. You see how it just slides in. Well, here's the new one. You notice, yeah, we can push it in. Good God, it takes a lot more to push it in. But you'll also notice. Then it shoots back out on its own. Unlike that one, it still hadn't shot out. So we're gonna put these parts on and um, get this job back together. Like I said, the spring goes down in there, down there in that portion there, and we'll use a floor jack to pick that lower control arm up. We're gonna mount the shock first because the shock will actually be used to help tie this thing up until we get everything else connected on it. All right, and. I think before we do that, we'll go ahead and replace this ball joint too.